Hey guys, this is Mikko. If you ever have the experience of doing art courses for students, you'll get a unique opportunity to observe how the learning process for art happens. Most of us have only our own experience, but when you see new artists developing their skills, you start to see some patterns happen there. There are some individual differences, of course, but few key elements seem to be present for every art student that just grows exponentially compared to others during a course. I don't think there's anything inherently special or gifted about these students, and, and I'm in no way trying to take credit for their progress. The ones that learn fast are, in addition to these habits, also very hardworking and they put in the hours. It's just the way that energy is directed that is special, and that focus allows them to climb higher and faster, while the rest are circling around, trying different paths uphill. If I was just starting digital art now, and knowing what I know now, I'd focus my attention in a different way, based on this knowledge, and I'm sure I would have gotten over the frustrating parts much, much faster. I also would have saved myself so much money, energy and time if I had just stopped spreading myself thin on trying to absorb everything at once. Let's be real here, if I had stopped trying to find the easy way out, because that's what all of this really boils down to. So the topic of this video is my one brush method, and I think it's important to differentiate between my style and the learning method of one brush style. I use one brush just because I like to, and that is part of my style in some of my paintings. I have many different styles, not all of them are done with one brush. But what I'm talking about in this video is one brush method when it comes to learning and the benefits that that offers. This is not about turning you into a painter that only uses one brush. But when you're learning digital art, I think this method is incredibly important and helpful and I'm going to break down the benefits in this video and hopefully some of you will put down at least 50 of your process and maybe have a little bit of more focus. Or at least I'm trying to reach those of you who feel frustrated that digital art feels so frustrating in the beginning when progress is so slow. Quick disclaimer here, the advice on this channel is free, yet for a few of you what I'm going to say here is going to be highly upsetting. Whether it's because you'll feel like you want to justify spending money on software, or if you feel like I'm trying to take away all your shiny toys, I'm not. I understand where that frustration is coming from, and by all means, if you want to go and use 30 process for your next painting, don't let me stop you. But if you still feel frustrated about your brushwork after you're done, and you feel like the good paintings are just leaning on luck rather than skill, this video will still be here, if you want to try another approach. I'm not trying to make your painting journey less fun. This information is strictly for those who start digital painting and feel overwhelmed by how slow the progress can be in the beginning. That slowness is optional. This information is based on what I've seen to work for beginners, over and over again. I don't know, sometimes I feel it's exhausting how careful you have to be with your words online when you talk about these things. But it's the internet, so if someone is looking to get upset, there are probably more pressing matters in the world going on right now. Anyway, on with the video. With this painting that is happening in this video, I wanted to let myself just enjoy the fall colors and explore different brushstroke rhythms in this nearly vertical wall-like painting. It took a really long time to get started, so I didn't cut that part out at all, so you will see me just struggling to find shapes in this chaos. For the entire painting I'm using Forest Trail brush from my own brushes for painter's set. I often mention which brush I'm using in the beginning of my videos, and for this one in particular I think it's important to underline that this is one brush that I'm using for the entire painting. Recently I got a comment where a viewer was criticizing me for presenting the one brush technique as the right way to paint. Let me be very clear on this. There is no right way to paint. There's not even a right way to learn. 
However, most of the people subscribed to this channel are still in the beginning of their learning process. And I am 100% sure that painting with one brush is by far the absolute fastest way to learn how to use brush strokes in your painting. And for that part, I'm not going to apologize. I don't always use only one brush. My graphic style, for example, I have made a whole set of different brushes that I use with that style. And that brush set makes that style efficient and fast to do for me. It wouldn't be the same style without that tool set that I had created for that style. When I work on pixel art, I have different brushes for different sizes of blocks. Last few movies that I worked on, those concept images were closer to matte paintings and Brushes are really only good for sketching those matte paintings. I have to say that as a sidebar, it's necessary to do that part too, but more on that later. Putting a matte painting together is mostly just photo manipulation and not something that I would personally call painting. I don't say that it's worse or better, but it's just its own different thing. Those are just few situations where bigger brush set is handy to have and almost necessary as long as it actually speeds up the process and serves the process. I'm in no way against that, now or ever. I think that's clear enough. I do it too in those cases and many others where the situation calls for it. Having said that, knowing what I know now about how students progress during an art course, I know for a fact that the ones who are willing to embrace the constraints of a single brush learn faster than others. And there are many reasons why this is. Learning how to use brush strokes is very close to learning line rhythm in your drawings. So let's use that as an example first to illustrate what I mean. Let's say that an art teacher gives a lecture on line rhythm and the following assignment is a drawing. This drawing in the assignment is one where the intent is to describe volume in the way a round object is shaded with lines. Let's say that there are three students. One student uses uh, charcoal that he has smeared with his finger to create smooth shading. One uses an ink pen and one shows up with a drawing that is done with a plastic bucket dipped in paint. Okay, deep breaths. <laughs> First of all, I hope we can all appreciate that the creativity that goes into choosing a bucket as your art tool of choice. I also think this sort of rebellious attitude towards process can be incredibly powerful asset to have in one's art career. So I don't want to crush that. Let's be very careful when trying to take the bucket out of this person's hands. But in the bigger bird's eye view of this situation, the only person who has learned about line rhythm at all is the student that decided to use an ink pen. I'm not commenting on the artistic value of the smeared charcoal drawing or the bucket drawing in this situation at all. Both can absolutely be masterpieces, but those students just missed an opportunity to learn how to utilize lines to describe volume of an object. Not only that, they also missed out on creating texture on the surface with line, directing the eye with line direction, and so on. More focused learning results in faster learning. Brush strokes in a painting are even more complex than lines in a drawing, because there are so many other aspects added on top of just a line that starts and ends. When I'm putting down a brush stroke, there's the inherent value of the color I'm using, the brush reacts to the pressure in its own way and creates texture at certain angles. You might also be using a brush that changes in opacity and size based on how hard you press it against your canvas. All of these small decisions and how you apply them is also your unique handwriting that can help you finding your own style. Not to mention developing a muscle memory for that one brush's unique set of parameters doesn't happen overnight. It takes repeated practice. Now let's go back to the bucket guy, the guy who did the drawing exercise by drawing with a bucket dipped in paint. If the bucket student puts the bucket down for a few months and sits down to learn how to use lines in his art, this doesn't mean he won't want to use the bucket later. But when he does the next bucket drawing, the work is going to be informed by his knowledge of line work based on this training he put himself through. He will never have to pick up an ink pen again. 
And for the record, I don't especially like using ink pens either. They're kinda scary in how unforgiving they are. This is a drawing by Jackson Pollock. It's clear that he understood line rhythm, like few do, before he found his paint gripping style. And it's evident in every one of his paintings, where the arcs of paint take us on a journey through his art, and then catch our gaze at the edges, and he directs us back in again. What initially looked like pure chaos is in fact the mastery Pollock has in creating perfectly controlled vortex of lines that traps us in and keeps us looking at the painting like it's this hypnotizing magical object. Same way once a person learns how to use brush strokes, it will inform them how to use any brush they might want to add to their arsenal. This way you don't only learn to do the manual work of painting, but even more amazingly, you will start to see the lines in the art, and you will become aware of how your eye moves around the surface of your painting. This will also unlock so much enjoyment in seeing everyone else's art around you too, and there's this whole another level to every painting you ever see. And I'm not talking about just lines and lines created by brush strokes, it's also about knowing when to not put a line down and when not to focus attention to a certain part of a painting. And you will see these rules happening everywhere, whether it's photography or just graphic design. I hope I wouldn't need to say this, but it doesn't hurt, so one more disclaimer. The end goal of this is not at all to paint like me. Truth is almost opposite to that. This method will make you paint in the way only you can paint and no one else can reach that end result when you find your own handwriting to your painting. Whether that includes one brush or a set of 50 brushes, that's up to you. Or maybe your tool of choice is cookies dipped in ink. I don't care, I think that sounds interesting. That's entirely up to you. If you've followed any number of digital artists online, you've noticed that most of us go through the round brush phase. I also started using the round brush one year and made hundreds of paintings with the brush that comes default in every painting program. I get why everyone gets excited about it. I also kind of wish that someone had taken the other options out of my hands in the beginning, or at least given me an option that's good for painting anything. I guess the turning point for me came when I was watching one lecture by Dylan Cole, he does the matte painting designs in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. And I mean designs, not the actual like photographic stuff on top of it. Uh, even the photorealistic matte paintings need an actual design and painting as a base. That base is painted with one brush. He uses only dry chalk brush and that's a default brush in Photoshop. At first I got really excited about that one brush. By the way, the painting you see in some of my videos as background is also done with that dry chalk brush. However, there's nothing special about that one brush. It almost fills the criteria that I've gone through in my perfect brush for digital painting video, but the real benefit, of course, was learning how to design my brush strokes so that I can control the attention, describe surfaces, group patterns, create micro and macro compositions, playing with line rhythm, communicate volume and gather attention with varying brush stroke sizes. All of those things will still take the rest of my life to learn and to explore, but I'm so glad that I started. If I was still clinging to my Photoshop brush set that had over 50 brushes, I'd be just as lost as I was 20 years ago. On top of all of this, it takes away so much unnecessary brain clutter from the process, because painting is a collection of just hundreds and hundreds of different design decisions over and over again. There are so many aspects of a painting that you need to keep thinking constantly, and if you add on top of all of that clutter, these sort of like unnecessary things, like for example using tons and tons of layers, this painting is painted mostly on a single layer. I only add new layers when I try new things, and then I flatten them down, and then I just have one layer again. And this is for the same reason, to reduce that unnecessary brain clutter so that I can focus all of my attention to this painting and what it needs, and not think about 
what brush would be the right for this section of the painting or what layer am I working on. You probably notice that when I'm trying to get a painting done quickly on live streams and there are so many things to think of, including the chat, I often paint on the wrong layer and it just doesn't help my speed at all. I also want to say that I get that stamp-like process that create an illusion of foliage are fun to play with, or a brush that creates stars. That's fun, obviously it's fun. I'm not trying to stop you from doing that. With this video I merely hope to point to a set of stairs that you can climb if you choose to do so. And if you develop that skill of seeing the way brush strokes are an unique expression of who you are, then you'll be able to go effortlessly anywhere. And I hope we all get to see the things that you will be able to make, because there will be no limits to what and how you'll be able to create. I'm Mikko and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!